Greetings everyone, my name is Michael McCann and welcome to this Wayward Art Company video on creating landscapes in Blender 2.8. Now I should begin by saying that this isn't a full step-by-step -step video tutorial on this process because currently we're still in the alpha version of Blender 2.8. So many things aren't really working as they should, and also the Blender developers are constantly making changes to the UI, and I want to make sure that all of the content in these videos are still relevant once the final version of 2.8 lands, so that users that are new to Blender can follow along. But I am planning some more detailed videos on this subject in the very near future. So let's begin by talking about displacement. I am in the Cycles Render Engine, which you need to be in order for this process to work. And I'll begin by subdividing my plane, and I'll change the number of cuts to 50. And then I'll come over to my modifiers, and I'll give it a subdivision surface. And I'll change the viewport display to 4, and the render to 5. And the way that we're going to be adding our displacement is a little different than we did in version 2.79. The most common method used to be to add our subdivision and then add a displacement modifier, uh, but this felt a little clumsy because we had to jump back and forth between our modifiers tab and the textures tab to get the settings the way that we wanted them, and even then there still weren't very many options. So instead we'll be doing our displacement with material nodes. So in the node editor, I'll type Shift A and then choose Vector and Displacement, which is a new node to version 2.8. And then in the viewport, I'll go to Render to View. And I'll plug that displacement into the material output, but it currently doesn't have any texture information for it to displace. So I'll type Shift A, choose Texture, and then Noise Texture, and then plug that factor directly into the height on the displacement node. And it can be a little difficult to see the effect of that displacement in the viewport, so something I find really helpful is just to type Shift A, go to Input, and choose a Fresnel node, and then add that to a Viewer node. And that just helps me see the detail of the displacement as I'm creating it. If I take the detail on the noise texture all the way up, you can see that that detail has really come through, so that's looking a lot better. And an easy way to think of the scale values on these nodes is if I increase the value on the displacement node, it scales it in the Z direction, meaning that a higher value makes the displacement taller. But the scale on the noise texture affects the X and Y directions. Another way to create landscapes in Blender was to use the Landscape Generator add-on, but by adding a color ramp in, we can basically eliminate the need for it. If I slide the black value up on the color ramp, it begins to level out the floor of the landscape. And already I'm starting to get a few ideas for renders just by making that simple adjustment. This all already looks like a pretty interesting landscape. Another feature that the landscape generator had was a plateau value, which would set the maximum height of the landscape. So if I slide this white value back, now the top of that landscape starts to level out. And this would be a very good starting point if you were trying to make, say, like a, a desert landscape uh, canyon type scene. And playing with all of these values can be a great way of helping you to conceptualize a scene because it can be very difficult uh, to create landscapes or get the inspiration to uh, figure out what kind of landscapes you want to make, but uh, this is certainly a fun and easy way to do it. Now I can add a texture coordinate and a mapping node, and I'll switch the texture coordinates to UV and that creates a different result. And I can also play with the location of the X and the Y values, and that will also generate different types of landscapes. It looks pretty cool. It's maybe like a great scene to put a little pirate ship in, like a little cove or an island uh, in the water. So that would be pretty awesome. But for this, we're just going to do a really simple little strip of land. I do want to keep that black value up a little bit because I'd like to put some uh, just some little simple puddles on the ground. So now we're ready to talk about the textures and materials, but while we're still on the subject of displacement, uh, it kind of pertains to the texture, because we're not just limited to using 
procedural textures, we can also create an image texture. And I'll click on the New tab, and I'll just call this Path. And I'll change the color to white, and click OK. And then I'll type Shift A and add a Color Mix RGB node. I'll set the blend type to multiply and then connect the color from that texture into the second color input. This will allow me to paint the displacement directly on the mesh. So if I switch from object mode to texture paint, then I come over to the properties window and I select my tool settings and make sure that the path paint slot is selected, which is the texture that we just created. I'll switch the color all the way to black and take the strength all the way up. Now I'll just paint the path through. And it is lagging a little bit. I, you know, we have the subdivision surface set up so high and you know, texture painting is always a little slow anyway. Uh, but once you've painted it, I can set my factor all the way up and it will uh, become darker although we'll probably take that back down because that's probably a bit too much but just to demonstrate what that did uh, we can see now that the displacement has actually happened and once again I'll reconnect the Fresnel node to the viewer node it, it helps to show the depth of the displacement a little better and I can make some adjustments to this value on the multiply node to get the right amount of displacement for that path and now that we have the displacement done, we can just focus on the material now. And I've already set up a very simple material with the principal shader. It includes a color, roughness, and normal map. But the roughness map doesn't really take into consideration the puddles that we created. So I can just simply box select the noise texture, color ramp, and texture coordinate and mapping node and duplicate them with Shift D. Now if I type Shift A, I can choose Color and then Mix RGB and add this to the Color Map and also the Roughness Map. Set them both to Multiply and then plug in the Color Ramp into the second input on both of those nodes. Now if I take the factors all the way up, I will be increasing the dark values from that noise texture. Now I'm going to add the color ramp to the viewer node, and this will allow me to sharpen up the shape of that puddle, uh, because right now all of that dark value will be adding too much uh, glossiness to the surface. So we're basically just going to make most of the ground white and the puddle will be black. And the impact that will have on the roughness value is to make the reflections very sharp, as puddles would naturally be. Uh, but for the color, it will add a little bit of darkness because as light's going through water, through the puddles, uh, it would appear darker under the surface. But the color is a little too dark, so maybe this value is, is just too high. We can pull it back a little bit. And that's looking much nicer. And say we want to add a second material for the path that we created. Say you wanted cobblestone. Well, this can be done really easily. I can just mix these two materials with a mix shader and then use the path texture that we painted as the mix factor. Now it's time to talk about the downside of using this method of displacement, and that's particles. So the next step would be to add grass to our scene. But as you can see, if I add a particle system and switch it to hair, the hair strands aren't sitting on the surface, and that's because the displacement is happening through the material and not through the normals of the mesh. If you see, I can select the mesh and the outline is still there at the grid. However, there is a really easy fix for this. Let's add the mix RGB node that's going into the displacement node to the viewer node. Now we can see it in the viewport. The next step is to add a texture node. So I'll just type Shift A, go to Texture, and then choose Image Texture. And I can create a new image by clicking New. And I'll call this Height Map. 
and I'll take the texture size up to 4096 by 4096 and click OK. And then in the render settings, I'm going to come down to sampling and take the render samples all the way down to one because we're going to be baking this texture and it doesn't need any samples because we're not actually calculating any light. And when baking textures and cycles, it's really important to make sure that the texture that you're baking to is selected in the node editor. So let's open our UV image editor and we'll select that height map texture. That way we can see the result of it baking and then click bake. And the next step would be to disconnect that displacement from the material because we'll be adding that texture to the displacement modifier now. So let's go to our modifiers, click add modifier and then choose displace. And in the modifier settings, we can click new texture and then set the texture coordinates to UV. And now in the texture settings, we can then choose that texture, the height map that we just baked. Now come back to the modifier and adjust the strength of the displacement. And now I'm going to add back some material displacement for the cobblestone and the dirt. And I can use the path texture that we painted as the mix factor. In addition to using the texture that we baked, the height map for the displacement, we can also use it for a mask to create our particle system. This is a really good way of adding grass to a scene when you wouldn't say want it on the path or in the puddles for instance. Uh, this works really well so that texture has two really good uses. And you may be wondering why we went through the process of displacing with the material if we came back to the displacement modifier at the end anyway. And the reason is because one, we did a lot of our um, setup for the displacement in one window rather than having to flip back and forth between the modifiers and the textures tabs. Uh, but also we have our displacement working directly with the material itself to create those puddles. And that's just one example. You can do so many other things with it. Um, and then lastly, of course, we have that texture mask to create the particle system for the grass. There's so many benefits to doing it this way. Another benefit, for instance, is to use all of the various inputs and factors from all of these different uh, procedural textures. If I use the factor of the noise texture for the height, I could say then add another procedural texture. We'll use Musgrave in this instance, and we'll plug the color into the distortion. Now we have a really unique and interesting pattern that we really couldn't get with the displacement modifier. And I could even animate this to create something cool like, say, lava. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Follow me on social media. I'll leave links in the description. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.